I don't want to be pompous about it, but I have got enough confidence to know that I am at the beginning of something. I know that people looking in from the outside would say that I'm dissipating my energies and would do better to concentrate on one thing, but I know that I couldn't possibly uh, lead my life in any other way. This is a story of two men, both young, both brilliant, and both composers. And apart from that, they've hardly anything in common except vitality. Dudley Moore works in London. He was an organ scholar at Magdalen College, Oxford, for four years, and now he writes jazz, popular songs, review numbers, commercial jingles, string quartets, practically anything. He's recognised as one of the up-and-coming musicians of show business. He's 26. Peter Maxwell Davies is also 26, and he lives in the country. As a composer, he's a revolutionary. His music is advanced, difficult, and highly individual. Everything he writes is seized upon by the critics, and his music is already played not only in England, but all over the world. This sort of thing. Dudley Moore writes music like this. It's difficult to make a living as a composer, and Peter Maxwell Davies, when he stopped being a student, became a teacher, a music master at Sirencester Grammar School. He's no ordinary teacher. Messiaen's Noel, contrasting absolutely and completely the much more sober prelude which we had of Johann Sebastian Bach. Dudley Moore can't live just by composing either, and he earns his bread and butter as a freelance, playing music, his own and other people's, including Bach, in dance halls and jazz clubs. Peter Maxwell Davies has organised his life with fanatical efficiency. This apple loft is his studio. He converted it himself. It's a strictly functional place, stripped for musical action and almost like a monk's cell in its simplicity. This is the nerve centre of his small universe, and he's got twice the nervous energy of most people. He teaches all day, five days a week, and at night and at weekends and in the holidays, he composes, here in this room. This is his whole life. He can't bear wasting time. He doesn't stop to cook, he eats down the road. And apart from sleeping, he does almost nothing here except compose. As a composer, Maxwell Davies makes no compromises, no concessions to popular taste. Even at festivals of contemporary music, audiences are baffled, and one British symphony orchestra laughed at a score of his, saying it was unplayable. Technically, his music begins where Schoenberg and the twelve-tone school left off. He calls his melodies tone rows, and his rhythms and harmonies are organised according to equally complicated principles. A lot of people have criticised me for writing music in which they find no meaning. I take for granted that what I write has got a meaning. I think a composer should be able to take that for granted, otherwise he should not be in the business at all. What does keep me awake at nights is the method of expression, the technique of composition. This, I think, is the composer's first concern. My mode of thought is often very complex. This piano piece, which I wrote in 1955, is, in the first place, very simple, but later development is more complex.
It's the next section of the piece which might cause trouble. I've often been criticized for this sort of music, but as far as I'm concerned, it's all part of the same piece and the logical outcome of the first idea. I know that a lot of people find that disagreeable, but that second idea is all part and parcel of the first idea and is the logical outcome of it. I'm very encouraged by the reception this music gets with a lot of people, particularly with the children at the school, who enjoy it. And it's true, the children of Sirencester do seem to enjoy what he writes for them, though it's equally true that this is simpler than the music which he writes for professional performers. My own music, I think, communicates something to those children who take the trouble to listen to it and certainly to those who have performed in it. I'm quite confident that they have enjoyed doing O Manu Mysterium, for instance. In Maxwell Davies, composing and teaching are two aspects of the same single-mindedness. But by the very nature of his talents, there can be no such single-mindedness for Dudley Moore. He lives in a flat in the Kilburn High Road, a flat which used to belong to Johnny Dankworth, who got him his first job, and to Cleo Lane, Mrs. Dankworth, with whom Dudley Moore does cabaret. Compared with the whitewashed sanity of Sirencester, the place is a shambles. Hello? Yes? Oh, yeah, could you hold on a minute? I've got a lot of shopping. Hold on. Hello, sorry. Uh, oh no, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm doing a concert then. Uh, the Festival Hall Recital Room. That's about seven o'clock. What time's the cabaret? No, I'm sorry, I don't think I could manage that. But the week after it would be all right for me. Mm. Yeah, but in any case, I think it would be better. There's no great concentration here. Maxwell Davies uses every minute of his life, but Dudley Moore's approach is more casual, and so is his music. Instead of composing, building up a movement bar by bar on highly developed principles, he improvises, and on the best authority. Moore turns out pop songs, commercials for soap, or a quartet for strings with equal facility. And improvisation is the starting point for almost everything he does. He publishes very little and generally works on commission, writing background music for films and incidental music for theatres like the Royal Court in London. She tastes every misfortune from a husband that betrayed her. 
If you pity her, your highness, after her song is finished, you should reward her handsomely. Very well. I shall. Tell me, woman, can you sing the Joe Dynasty annals of the tales of the kingdoms? No. Those of the Han, Su, or Tang dynasties? I do not know that. Drive her away! Charles, could you just, um, pause a little on the... Those are the Han, Su, or Tang dynasties to give the snare drum time to come in between. Those are the Han, da 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 Su, da 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 Tang dynasties. Could you try it from those are the Han? There, right? Maxwell Davies and Dudley Moore are both more than composers. Davies is also a teacher, and Dudley Moore is an entertainer. He works in revue and cabaret, and it's not only his material which is funny, he himself is entertaining. Well, I started fooling around at school, really, when I was about 15. Uh, I wasn't very popular at school when I was young, being a very serious boy and very hard-working. And it wasn't so much a desire to become popular uh, as a desire to be less unpopular that made me uh, start fooling around. And I found that I could make people laugh, and, and I started to cash in on this.